So we just uh, came here to, to kite um, for a bit and I actually been doing kiting for the last four years. Hello, I'm Stanislava and uh, I'm an engineer and currently I'm working for IBM Cloud as a team lead for the EMEA region um, for the global success team. But what I'm actually doing is helping clients to move their workload from their local uh, environments to a data center that my company is owning. And we help them to secure their workload, their data, their uh, applications or websites, or whatever it takes. I'm a software engineer and that's what my uh, education is. And I worked as such for uh, quite some time. And currently I have moved mostly to um, working with the technology, but together uh, with the clients. And I really like as well the sales perspective and, uh, and understanding the client's uh, problem and challenges and help them to solve it. That's something that I'm really passionate about to combine my social skills and my soft skills together with my programming or uh, technical skills. So I'm basically uh, helping clients um, to architect their uh, software solutions and to move them to the cloud. I was studying French and I really um, enjoyed doing that, but in the same time I was really strong at math. And in the language school where I was, um, there was not that many people that actually could do both languages and mathematics. And I thought this kind of like a strong uh, combination of skills. Therefore, I found this university in Bulgaria where actually you have to apply to study engineering in French. And I say, okay, right, <laughs> that's where I should go. When I was at the Technical University of Sofia, that was really, really um, interesting to be there. But at the same time, I got um, a scholarship to move and study in Sweden. Um, I found that really, really interesting as I had this passion to travel, to live in a different country and for me it didn't took really a long time to decide to go. So I actually went to Sweden for six months uh, for Erasmus exchange program. Uh, it was wonderful. So I thought mm, maybe I should move here to, to do my master. Yeah, I talked to some people, I showed my interest and I got admitted. However, at the same time, I was not really done with my bachelor in Bulgaria. So, but there was also like a possibility to do bachelor and master at the same time. Um, so what I actually did is to, to do it together. It was pretty tough, <laughs> I would say, uh, but I think I really learned so much and uh, that gave me a great, uh, great base to move with my career. So at the last uh, six months of my education in Sweden, we could actually choose a school or a project or a company to do our master thesis. And I really, really wanted to do it in a company to get the real experience. I already had a, probably six years of studying, so I was so eager to start working already. Then I started applying for different companies and looking for different projects. Well, I got a lot of no's, so there were a lot of no's, and especially when you don't have any experience here in a foreign country. I think it's pretty normal to, to, to not have this really fast start from the very beginning. So that's one thing about um, also being an engineer or any other profession is just to, to really don't give up when you get a lot of uh, no's from, <laughs> from the employers and just to keep going and to think about what actually excites you, what's your end goal and maybe try to find a different ways to achieve it. Maybe the way that you're trying is not working, so, but there are other ways that you can actually use. I looked at a few companies and nobody really um, called me back and then I saw this advertisement for Ericsson. I saw uh, this advertisement about Master Thesis, I really love the topic um, and I said wow I'm gonna call. I called the manager and we had a talk and we talked what I'm doing and he actually invited me for an interview. The interview was just so chilled and I was really ready for something wow, but it was just like so natural, it was wonderful and, and in the end I got the job. 
After I spent, I, I think around like six years in, uh, in Sweden, I decided to change the job and not because I didn't like the job, actually the job was really, really nice and the company and everything. But I said, okay, I'm very young, that's my first job and I wanted to explore more, to see, uh, to get more experience and just to take the risk to try something different. In that time, I thought cloud is a very interesting field to be and I started researching different cloud companies and trying to also think hmm, maybe if I'm changing the job I can also change the country just to experience also a different country. So that time I just started kiting, kite surfing and uh, for me that was very important that I would live in a place where actually there is a lot of wind and I can uh, easily go to kite. That's why I uh, chose the Netherlands. For me, my hobbies is a big part of my life. Um, together with kite surfing, uh, yoga is something which I love doing. And um, I'm currently also teaching at uh, my, my work location here in Amsterdam. How it's all started with yoga, I was back in my hometown in Bulgaria in Dobrich and um, I found this uh, meditation class in a school gym <laughs> and suddenly I started also following a lot of yoga classes here and there while I was traveling later on YouTube and or online courses and it's always been part of my life maybe in a different way um, and the moment when I uh, arrived to the Netherlands I found this amazing yoga studio. I really found that yoga studio one week after I arrived here. And the moment I entered, I already felt like at home. And it's such an amazing feeling of belonging, which I really love to have, because when you're not living in your home country, you really need to have this kind of feeling from, from somewhere. And that yoga studio really um, was that for me. I never really thought to become a yoga teacher, <laughs> um, but I thought it's just really nice to study to become a yoga teacher, just to improve your own practice, so I can actually do the exercises better and I can also understand the concepts better. So I did that one year uh, yoga teacher training and now I actually start teaching at my work. So that's a really nice way to contribute to the workspace, to connect with my colleagues, in a different way. So we just uh, came here to, to kite um, for a bit and I actually have been doing kiting for the last four years. There are like a few reasons maybe why, why I really fall in love with kiting and uh, the first time was somewhere in Tarifa in Spain and when I saw the kites and like the sunset and the water, I thought, wow, it's like, uh, it's so amazing. It's such a free feeling. So I thought, okay, I should try that. Then I start going for some lessons and I start kiting. And basically what I really love about kite surfing is that it's in a way to connect to the nature. And when you're an engineer or most of the time you actually work in an office, in the end of the day, you actually need some kind of connection. And kiting is something that gives me that. That's something that makes me do it uh, quite often. <laughs> and helps you also to break the day and to, to get a bit of a fresh mind and to face the next uh, challenging day at work. Since I start kiting, most of my vacations are just about kiting or surfing. And I love that. It's like a different way of experience a country. And basically kite surfing is taking you to a very beautiful spots all around the world. They're usually very remote as well. So they're not uh, often next to a big hotel resort. They're really in the nature. And it's, it's just a beautiful way to travel, I think. 